Hello everybody, this is Joe. Welcome to my front porch. Um, I'm going to be talking about a book that I just finished this morning. It is a biography of the national hero of the Philippines called uh, The First Filipino, a biography of Jose Rizal by Leon Guerrero. This biography was written, I believe it was written in English, it's not a translation, it was written in English, with long stretches of Spanish, which I'll get into. Um, I believe it was published in 1960 in response to the Philippine government's call for a, a contest for a biography, to, uh, a Jose Rizal biography. Uh, and this was done in commemoration of Jose Rizal's 100th birthday. Jose Rizal, of course, was born in, I believe, 1861 and was executed by firing squad in December of 1896 there in uh, Manila, in present-day Luneta Park. Uh, let's see. So for this book review, I am going to be using the authorized Heather Reed's structure of reviewing nonfiction books by a series of questions. You guys know what to do. Heather Reads, 1R. You know what to do. Okay. Uh, question number one, can I summarize this book? Uh, I guess I just did. It is a biography of Jose Rizal, who was uh, a, a author of two novels, tried to write a third, never completed it. Uh, the two novels being Noli me tangare, which is Latin for, um, hey, get your hands off me, and el, its sequel, El Filibusterismo, which means the, um, the insurrectionist or the subversive or something like that. Um, he was also an essayist, a poet, an artist, a sculptor, a farmer, a a surgeon, mostly an eye surgeon, uh, specialized as an ophthalmologist, um, etc. A world traveler, <laughs> uh, a, 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 a self-made man, if you will, and uh, by my reading, a um, unwitting and unwilling spearhead, inspiration, uh, figurehead for the Philippine Revolution, where the um, uh, various insurrectionist organizations there in the Philippines overthrew the old bloated Spanish Empire right at the turn of the century with a little help from a country um, that I I think it's a country nearby where I live right now and I can't quite remember who they are anyway uh, next question how is this book structured um, this book is structured in an interesting way. It goes through his life more or less sequentially, but it, Jose Rizal, being a prolific diarist and essayist and poet for his entire life, his, his, his life is shockingly thoroughly documented, even as a, a child. I'm, I'm stunned by how much of his diaries, his letters, and letters from his own family to him and his own friends, how much has been preserved and how much we actually know about Jose Rizal. So there's a lot of poetry that he wrote, a lot of essays that are, that are reprinted in full, in the original Spanish, untra untranslated mostly, which I actually appreciate. When we get later on in the book, um, in this biography, the structure kind of deviates between, it'll alternate between chapters on his life and then the politics of the revolution that was happening coincident with his life. Because there were a lot of organizations, the uh, Katipuna, um, the KKK for short, uh, and other organizations that were insurrectionists that were using Jose Rizal as an inspiration, as a spearhead, as somebody that they're doing this insurrection in his name um, yeah, for morale and for solidarity. Um, also using uh, Masonic lodges uh, for secrecy, uh, as uh, for solidarity and fraternity for these insurrections that really had nothing to do with Jose Rizal. 
But nonetheless, these insurrectionist groups could, you know, they were probably going to happen with Jose Rizal, but Jose Rizal was instrumental to their organization, whether he liked it or not. So the chapters kind of alternate between his life and then the politics of insurrectionist uh, uh, Philippines. Uh, the book ends, of course, with his execution at the hands of the Filipinos, but the Spaniards were kind of holding rifles to the, to the Filipinos who were executing Rizal. <laughs> uh, and it ends with an essay on why our author, Leon Guerrero, considers Jose Rizal to be, quote unquote, the first Filipino. I'll get back to that. Next question. Why did I choose to read this book? Well, I have been spending a lot of this year uh, reading what I can about uh, the Philippines, Philippine history, and a lot of it devoted to the, the what I consider one of the great forgotten wars of the United States. Uh, that is the Philippine-American War there at the turn of the century. Uh, yeah, we were at war with the Philippines. They just kind of fell in our lap after the Spanish-American War and uh, we decided to fight the Philippines because they wanted independence. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of history that involves Jose Rizal even after his execution because of that. So on the one hand, I've been reading a lot about that history and I decided that I wanted to read these novels uh, from Jose Rizal, uh, starting with Noli Me Tangare. Um, this was written in Latin and this is one of many translations uh, of this novel and I gotta be honest I, I went maybe 20 chapters into this novel they're short chapters but I went about 20 chapters into this novel and I didn't know what the hell was going on it just sounded like a ridiculous telenovela I, I had no historical context about why this novel was so important and why it affected the people there in Philippines and, and the people in Europe, for that matter. He, Jose Rizal wrote this when he was in Germany. It was published initially in Germany, I believe. Somewhere in Europe, I believe in Germany. It affect, and he wrote it for the education of, Europe, of Europeans, but he would also say, and in other situations, that he wrote this for the people of the Philippines. He wrote it for both audiences. And why this book was so instrumental in the ultimate Philippine Revolution and the, and the defeat of the Spanish Empire there in Philippines and then of course ultimately Jose Rizal's execution. It just reading it as a dopey American in the 21st century it just sounds it reads like a ridiculous telenovela but I decided to stop because I know it's important I just don't understand that context so I decided to stop reading it and pick up a good biography of Jose Rizal to get that perspective to get that context to be prepared to read now um, uh, Noli Me Tangare. So th this is initially why I read this book. Um, question, next question, how did you get this book and how much did it cost? I purchased this book at the uh, best used bookstore in Southern New Mexico, uh, which I shall keep unnamed, uh, but it is in Las Cruces, New Mexico. and it cost five American dollars uh, used. This is from this book is used from uh, published in 1960 and in remarkably good condition um, for its age. But it is fragile. I can tell it's in cheap paper. It's in cheap binding. It was published in Philippines. It says so in the front. Published by the National Historical Institute in Manila. In this edition came in 1979 and by the by so so it is uh, the, the binding is old even though it is in uh, good condition and my reading it has really worn it worn it out I'm gonna be putting it on the shelf and leaving it be uh, <laughs> when I'm done with this review because it's unfortunately gotten a little bit more wear and tear on it and by the by uh, my wife Rosemary tells me that this very book uh, with the identical cover was uh, read in her college for uh, Philippine history, I guess, there in Manila. So, next question. Have I encountered anything unexpected or interesting in this book? Um, yeah, many things. 
but I'm going to focus on one item of particular interest that I found very interesting. Okay, maybe two. The first one that I was surprised about and that I mentioned to Rosemary, my wife, was that Jose Rizal was uh, <laughs> quite the ladies' man. No matter where he went, be it Philippines, be it Europe, um, he did travel across the United States. S surprisingly enough, he kept diaries of his travels all over the world, all over Europe, all over the Philippines, even when he's a child, with one exception his transcontinental train trip across the United States. There's like no record of what happened there. Uh, strange <laughs> and surprising. <laughs> but he left a trail of girlfriends. My goodness, uh, he was quite the ladies' man. Um, even in Europe, in, in Philippines, uh, and a lot of their letters, a lot of their let love letters are reprinted in this book. Um, of, he, he had requested before his execution at the hands of the Spanish to marry uh, an Irish woman that he had met when he was banished in Mindanao as a farmer, uh, which to my reading was probably the best time of his life. Um, it was an orphan girl from Ireland who had, she was basically a foster child who had been raised by multiple parents, quote unquote. Her real parents had died, and she was passed from one foster family to another. And uh, her father had wanted eye surgery, went to see uh, Jose Rizal, and the two fell in love, um, Josephine Bracken, this young Irish girl. Well, this was Jose Rizal's, I guess, final girlfriend. They could not get married because Jose Rizal was... Uh, uh, deemed an ex, uh, insurrectionist by the Spanish government and his views on Catholicism at the time were suspect so they could not get married even though Joseph Brackett was an Irish Catholic couldn't get married um, she tried to have they tried to have children there was a miscarriage and uh, Jose Rizal was executed before they actually could get married so that is that is among, among one among many tragedies. The other one was that Jose Rizal was in Europe when he published these novels and the Spanish government there in Philippines immediately um, deemed him to be a dangerous man because of his writings. Not only these novels but because of his essays and the people that he was associating with. Um, his best friend was Blumentritt. I can't remember his first name, but he had friends all over Europe. He, he had made quite a number of contacts while there. Word got back to Spain, and he was deemed an insurrectionist. Well, he's in Europe. They can't do anything about him there, but they could sure as hell arrest his family and uh, banish his family to places like Hong Kong and um, Mindanao and places like that. So Jose Rizal was forced to come back to Manila where his family was released, but then he was banished to Mindanao for the last three years or so of his life, where he became a very successful farmer. He ended up winning a lottery there, of all things, and he just became... <laughs> he started buying up a lot of farmland with that lottery money and uh, employing people. It's just amazing the luck he had in Mindanao, even though he was banished there, uh, you know, a... Uh, 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 held against his will by this by, by Spain. He was still a success there. It was just amazing. Well, the other thing that I find very surprising about this book is the title, First Filipino. See, I've, I've, one of the big question I've had when studying and reading about the, the, the Philippine Revolution there at the turn of the century was that before Spain came with Magellan and Legazpi and these guys way back in the 1550s and the Philippine Islands became a colony of Spain, part of the Spanish Empire, uh, the Philippines are actually hundreds if not thousands of habitable islands and many more thousands of, of uninhabited islands. In other words, it's an archipelago of many, many, many 
islands, tribes, languages, customs, etc. Not all of them, in my opinion, fell uh, fell under the uh, the allegiance of Spain. The the Tagalog people certainly did. Phil, uh, Jose Rizal was born in uh, Laguna, just south of there in Manila. So Manila Bay is just an obvious perfect defensive location a perfect bay it's an obvious place to have a major major city which Spain took advantage of Japanese took advantage of many many years later it's just an obvious place so yeah the Spanish had that area but all of those islands I've had a hard time understanding how all of these tribes could fall under the persuasion and the uh, uh, of Spain which I believe they actually all did not especially the southern end Mindanao you know when you read histories of Philippines Mindanao the southern third of Philippines the Muslim third uh, is never mentioned or very rarely I very rarely mention it I uh, the Spain appeared to have very little influence down there so how did that how did that portion of the Philippine Islands actually come to be part of quote unquote Philippines how did how did this nationalism begin and that's always been a big mystery to me you know just thinking about it and reading about it and it turns out this biography addresses it even if the explanations are still unsatisfactory to me it's it's a mystery the 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 subtitle of this biography is the first Filipino meaning that before the Spanish came there were there were multitudes of tribes in the Philippine Islands. There were Tagalogs, Papangans, Pangasinan, um, you know, etc., etc. Many, many tribes. But then after the Spanish leave, they are Filipinos. Whence comes the nationalism? And Jose Rizal calls himself a Filipino. You know, Philippines. That's named after Philip II of Spain. So what gives them this national allegiance? What gives the people, what gives Jose Rizal this national allegiance? Jose Rizal is one of the first people who did that, followed by a lot of the insurrectionists who later took on this inspiration. Um, it, that's, that's just a huge puzzle to me. But this book addresses addresses that, that Jose Rizal actually did this. He considered all the Philippine Islands to be united. I guess united against Spain, and that's, that's that what was caused the Union. Very interesting stuff. Um, is there anything readers should be prepared for if they decide to read this book? I haven't considered this question. I, all I would say is be prepared for lengthy sections of Spanish. A lot of Jose Rizal's poetry, a lot of his letters are left untranslated into English. They're left in Spanish, which I appreciate. I, I actually preferred that. Some of them are quite lengthy. Some of them are incriminating because they're against the Spanish uh, friar system, the, the Dominican friars. Um, Beyond that, you know, have a have an interest in history. This is a this is kind of unknown uh, in American history. This is Philippine history, but it's tangentially related to our involvement in the Philippines some years after Jose Rizal was executed. Um, anything else that is interesting to know about this book? I think I covered that in some of the surprising things that I discovered in this book. Some of the other things I found surprising were Jose Rizal's traveling and education in Europe. He was like a self-made man. Uh, granted, his family was not poor. They were, I would call, let's say, middle class. Uh, he had many, many brothers and sisters, especially sisters. He had like 10 sisters. But he was able to go to mainland Europe and spend many years there and become very educated. It's like the world back then. It's like when I read about Philippines and Europe during this time period in the 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, it's like unfamiliar. I don't recognize this world. 
in some ways it was so much more oppressive. You know, the, 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 the Spanish authorities arrested Jose Rizal's family by the publications of these books in, in Europe. So much more oppressive, and at the same time, in other senses, so much more free. They had the freedom, it seems, to travel where they wished, to be self-made edu and become educated. I don't know. It's 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 a weird world they lived in that I just don't recognize. And I'm I am su genuinely surprised by that. Anyway, any I any ideas for related follow-up reading? Um, well, of course, I'm going to be reading these novels next. I feel prepared. I have historical context for Jose Rizal's novels, but I'll continue reading about the American or <laughs> the Philippine Revolution. Um, I, I do have a book inside on the, um, the military end of the Philippine-American War. I don't remember who the author is, but I'll be reading that again later this year. And a couple of other novels uh, by Filipinos uh, that are historical novels set during that time period. So now I am anxious to get to them. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, Heather Reeds, for the structure of these book reviews. That's the official um, Heather Reeds uh, bulleted structure for reviewing nonfiction books. Thank you for uh, watching this video. That's the first Filipino, the biography of Jose Rizal by Leon Guerrero. And thank you for watching.